welcome to yet another sambad sambad means conversation today we are going to talk with vivek gupta he is an architect but if i start reading his profile i don't have i won't be able to you know finish it in time and we want to conclude this interview in time he is a legendary architect and he has done some amazing project pan india and even outside india so uh, we will start with vivek thank you so much for joining with us today vivek and uh, the idea and objective behind sambhav is to get to know you as a friend as an architect as a per- as a person who loves art and uh, his his relationship with art that's the idea beyond that i want my viewer to know you your philosophy your de- philosophy of your design how you see your designs how you perceive them how you manifest them how they come from paper to ground and you know they become a huge tall beautiful building so uh, today we are going to talk with vivek and uh, vivek let's start with what is it to be like an ar- what is it to be an architect you know a architect thank you. what is it to be an architect for you thank you ruby thank you ruby for asking me that because architect is is life for me you know to be an architect is the manifestation of just about everything creative you know i feel that there has been there is a very oft said thing that after god who created everything it's an architect who gets the opportunity to create things which remain longer than his own life you know because anything that we build tend to outlast us all the buildings that we are going to be building outlast us architecture yeah. i think is one of the most um, uh what should i say a uh, fulfilling profession you know uh when you can create something with all the emotion for the people for the society and uh, and that creativity makes an impact makes an emotional impact makes an spatial impact makes a physical impact on the surroundings of people and i think that is essentially what an architect does and that is what architecture is about creating memories for people uh, you know if you if you if you think about uh, all your childhood memories there would always be a built volume around you you know even if you are there is a reference point to a home close to your house there was something the room or the house that you lived in uh, your memories with the terrace of that house or the balcony or the courtyard or things like that so there is always a physicality of a built form which is around um, your memory i have always seen architecture as a marriage between art design and functionality and uh, how do you strike a balance you know how do you strike a right balance between art design and functionality and there must be some process because the kind of projects you have done they are huge projects they are beautiful they are they are magnificent you know they are big in scale and they are still beautiful you know so uh, so how do you manage and how do you strike the right balance in your project somewhere architects are from a mathematical background or a physics background and i'm not saying that it's it's as per a law but the reason that architects when they study maths and physics somewhere in their subconscious there is rational although an artist or a creative person or a sculptor can be a better architect in the sense that the form can be more beautiful so gaudi was not a architect architect but he was a master craftsman he was a creative person and look at the uh, the kind of buildings that he has created now that kind of a creation is a very organic creation there could be some time you could argue that there is not much logic in the kind of building that he has built but then it's beautiful architecture what an architect when he study finds what he is able to do is to put rational behind his creativity so functionality becomes the most important thing in my architecture or the kind of architecture that most of the architects do there is a special program that is there you know so there is a requirement that okay if it's a residential building then there are bedrooms living room toilets kitchen everything if it's a office building there is so if it's a museum if it's a public building so the functionality will always be the guiding factor behind the kind of building that you are or the kind of design that you're going to be making so that obviously is the foremost thing the second is the design of course then there comes to resolve that functionality through a meaningful design which 
um, which has its own interpretation because you have a style and you want to uh, weave together that manifestation in a certain style, in a certain narrative. And that story, that narrative becomes your design style. And then art, of course, is... Uh, I think I should come to you art in architecture slightly later as the conversation goes on because art is extremely central to our lives, not just to architecture. You know, even for public spaces, I think uh, the most important thing in public spaces is art. So if you see uh, right from ancient cities, the town squares, the public spaces that used to be there always had art, they used to have sculpture, they used to have something which I call as placemaking. That placemaking made people understand the functionality of that place. That sculpture, that piece of art gave them orientation to that entire space. You know, suppose you put a Madana, uske beech mein aapne ek, uh, ek sculpture lagaya. Supposing you put a Maharana Pratap sculpture right in the middle of that. It gives you an orientation to that entire space. There is a suddenly to that vast open space. There is a front, there is a left, there is a right, and there is a rear. And that is how you start articulating that space. But having said that, this is just the physical aspect of it. But emotionally, that placemaking that you do in public space becomes the most important aspect of defining that public space. Then there are public spaces at large, you know, in, in, in a city which, which come about because of uh, infrastructure development, which come about because of uh, engulf, being engulfed by buildings on all sides. So they become open spaces, which are public open spaces. And the articulation of those public spaces through art is what I've been advocating for the longest time. I've been talking about the underbellies of flyover. Why can't they be made beautiful? Why can't we use them? Uh, beautifully, why can't they become public gathering spaces? Why can't you have art? You can't have sculptures. Why can't they become green spaces? So I think art brings in a lot of peace and uh, serenity and a lot of containment in your life. So how does it different when you when you do a project in a big city from a smaller city? The surrounding has, surrounding has role to play. How would you interview that new uh, urban art, uh, architecture into the old existence uh, of that old town, small town? So how would you, uh, what, what kind of a uh, balance you would like to strike? And uh, what is your way to get interview and not being imposing and, uh, you know, uh, be part of that system without being impulsive and powerful and you become one with that environment. I think, uh, how do you manage that when it is given, when a, when a, when a architecture of your structure was a huge project, you know, five-star luxury hotels and stuff like that, and then you were given a project in a small city or small town, which has its own history to talk about, which has its own beauty. So how do you do that? You know, uh, I would love you to talk about that. So when I create my architecture, I create a building in a different town, in a different context, the whole context changes. You know, when we are creating in Delhi, there is a certain context. There's a context of that urbanity. There's that context of that um, uh, visual surrounding. There is a context to history, all of that. And then the climate. But when I go to Lucknow or I create in Leh, all these buildings that are created in Leh or in Sikkim, in Sinkam or Chennai or Bangalore and Bombay, or outside the country, what happens is that the context becomes very, very important. Client, of course, is it could be institutional client. It doesn't necessarily need to be an individual client. More so in our case, because uh, we work with a lot of institutional clients. Having said that, the second most important thing is the context. Where are you creating? If you are creating, you're building a building in Leh, Ladakh, the two other most important things are the climate. It's the climatic zone that you're creating. In which climatic zone you're creating? in a very dry and a cold climate. So your building has to respond to the climate. And that's, again, one of the reasons why I say that an architect needs to study science to be able to see the rationale behind creating a building like that. Nobody stops you to make a Disney world all over the world. You know? Disney world is, a, is, is an artistic thing. It's not an architectural thing. It's it's to create those kind of icons, to create that make-believe world. And you can have a Disney world. That's why it can be replicated everywhere. When you want to create those kind of buildings, so that's why you have um, uh, the, the Venetian created in Las Vegas also. Because Las Vegas is where people want to make-believe world. But when you actually create buildings which are about the context of the place that you want to create in, then you need to create architecture 
to to be uh, resonating with the context that you are creating it and the climate that you are creating it uh i maintain art is global architecture is not and that is the most important thing art is global by saying that i mean you can place art anywhere art remains very global it is global it's a universal language whereas architecture needs to be contextual it needs to be climatically contextual also so when you say it's, it has to be contextual and you, you have to work in the uh, harmony of the surrounding of that region so and you talk about leh ladakh and you talk about uh, the other cities so uh, do you incorporate the culture or a craft of a, lake, a local a local uh, Uh, area wherever you're working, and if yes, how do you incorporate that in your project, and how 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 do you think it's reflect in your design? So yes, of course. I mean, uh, there is always now there are at a macro level and micro level. So at a macro level, you learn the building techniques, like when you create in Ladakh, there are certain given that the indigenous architecture of Ladakh taught you how to build intelligently, because before you invented anything. Uh, people who have been living there knew how to build to suit the climatic conditions that they were building in. So there are certain elements of architecture that come about, local elements which are um, crafted elements of architecture because you know all the buildings also need to needed to be uh, well fenestrated and everything. Now uh, this is like a the wooden shin shack is kind of a shade over the buildings um, because Ladakh, as I said, is a dry climate. It gets very it can get hot so that is the kind of architecture that has come about but the learning of the techniques of building have come from the local people so in that sense you will say it's indigenous way of building one is doing so taking into account that and when you go at a micro level that when you come to detailing in a building how the windows have been detailed how you want to create that little ladakhi effect of architecture then what do you do how do you use the local craftsmen to be able to give that nuances in architecture where people start relating to those buildings now these are these are small little things but then when in a in a building uh, using those local craft art and building techniques together merged together is what i think is a sensible thing to do so i think architecture is an experience and in that experience until and unless you involve the nuances of 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 your daily life you know where there is craft there is art there is there is sensitivity and i think what you mean to say ruby i'm sure you know a sensitive person like you an artist like you who's curating hundreds and thousands of artists from all over the country and that's the reason one of the reasons i said um i'm not the best a person to talk about art or something but looking at your passion about what you're trying to do for these kids all over and they're not they they don't even know their own capabilities and you are you are being able to curate them and get them work and and currently the 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 project that um, uh, you're trying to help uh, one few of my friends with is amazing you know so if you if you are in a place where a lot of artwork is displayed and you were to buy for your if you are supposed to buy one painting for yourself which kind of painting you would go and say uh, i think this this works for me how do you decide that you like or dislike the painting you know because i don't dissociate art with the space i told you you know for me it's all contextual so as i said that it will be for that space what is what is the volume of that space what is the size of that painting what does it depict what emotion does it have what is the sensitivity what is the textorial feel to that thing and where am i going to place it i think so the whole thing comes into picture and then that is where i would choose um depending on what I, am i celebrating that space um am i am i is it a uh, you know a space where i want to feel humble you know is it something that i want to monumentalize everything i think it will it will depend on on the kind of space the kind of emotion that uh, that space has and i will choose it accordingly but um, again i am always open to seeking approval on on at least the artwork that i put to answer your question correctly it will have to respond to the emotion of that space it will have to respond to the scale of that space and what that space is conveying is it is it a celebration is it um, whatever yeah. okay 
I got your point. Now, let me rephrase the question. It is for Thank Vivek you. Gupta, only for Vivek Gupta, and we are buying painting for Vivek Gupta. So, is, you think you look for plain beauty and splash of color and vibrancy of it? Or you look for a subject? Or would you associate with the painting if it's emote any kind of emotion in you? It makes you happy, probably it makes you sad. I don't know. So, you think art has a power to convey that. That's what I gather from from your yes, last answer. It, it has to have. It's to. It has to convey something. If, if I have to be humble, if I have to be powerful, so that means you do communicate with art. So don't say that you don't all understand. That. That's what the art is all about. How it engages with you. You know, it's how what emotions is emote. It emotes in you. It's how how powerful, helpless, or happy it makes. You know. So I think uh, art has a its own vocabulary, its own sense of. Um, conversing with his viewer, and every viewer can come uh, come up with a different answer because we right, see right. our reality with our own perception, with our own experience, with our own understanding of life. So uh, yeah. you know, it's very individual. Liking of art and disliking of art could be very, very individual and personal battle. Now you've been designing a lot of lot of five star hotels, and I've seen a lot of projects designed by you. So, uh, so I've seen your projects and. There are uh, some uh, some art, uh, uh, you know, uh, always been displayed in every possible nook and corner. So when you visualize, you do visualize project with the spaces where you want to put art. Not necessarily you select them, not necessarily you decide right. what art to go, but you do feel that art needs to be there in your project. You have the question. I talked. I, I asked you about your relationship with art and uh, what is your relationship with contemporary art and how you see. Indian contemporary art and where it is going and what would you like to say to young artists, young budding artists? You know, Ruby, uh, I'm such a now person. Uh, every every new year, I send a greeting that happy now year. I believe in the now. I believe in the present moment. So everything is contemporary to me in that sense that, you know, uh, what is existing today is contemporary. So I really honestly don't differentiate between contemporary and vernacular or anything in terms of art because art is, art is timeless. Art is, um, art to me is, um, is timeless. But that's my understanding of, uh, so if you're talking about artists who are contemporary, who are presently there, uh, and if you call them contemporary artists, it's a different matter. But I leave uh, that part of my understanding of art to people who are experts like you. And that's my complete faith and belief. In, and that's why friends like you help you to understand art, a subject that you don't understand. And all other friends know, architect friends know, that how strongly I deny collaborations. When people ask about what are your views on collaboration, I say, bullshit. I don't believe in collaboration. You can collaborate on skills. But whereas art is where I don't collaborate, I give up, I just leave, I take a back seat and I let experts like you who know your subject, who not only know your subject, you know, there is a limitation that you can have as an artist. Every artist can have a limitation, you know, without naming everybody, the style, a flair and everything. Working with you, I've realized that there is an entire repertoire of kind of art, kind of sculpture, kind of... Uh, artists that I can work with. And the beauty of it all is that it's selfless. So there is not only a sense of um, getting to learn something, getting to get something curated from an expert, but also knowing that it is not only, it is also earning the goodwill of so many unknown artists sitting in all parts of the country who are gumnam otherwise. Abhi and Ruby are giving them those faceless people, uh, a, a canvas to put on some of the finest places designed by finest people. And you are the cause for celebration. And that's why I'm doing this interview with you, because I know that the work that you are doing, the uplifting work that you're doing for all those people is, is your goodwill and you're doing it selflessly. And I'm so happy to be able to say that, uh, I think my heart goes out to you for what you're doing and how all the conversation with you always bears around what is happening to these people, you know, that they don't have work, they don't have all of that and how you're trying to reach out to them. Hats off to you and really respect from the bottom of my heart for you. 
Oh, thank you so much for your kind words, but it is just something which which comes naturally to us. I, I know it it know. does come. We spoke about it how. And yes, and that's that's the other thing that we are trying to, you know, when I reached out to you and saying that you know this friend of mine wants a, a sculpture, and you you gave me hundred options that we got confused. In fact, you gave me you gave us all the options, and you were very pertinent that before fools like us want to do something in terms of sculpture, we must know what material, what size, what is the budget, how it is going to be transported, and everything. So that's why I'm saying leave it to an expert. give all the headache and just bask in the reflected glory so i'm sure that we will uh, be basking in the reflected glory of the good artwork that you will create for us and that's what collaboration is about uh, when you give 100% to somebody yes thank you so much for your kind word and uh, instead of using god help they are helping me to enrich my knowledge and my experience with art and i'm learning with every artist who's associating with us I think I am being selfish and learning from this young emerging artist from India, and it's a very fulfilling experience to work side by side with them. So I don't like to use word help, but it is a collaboration like between you and and the art uh, advisor. It is mine and my artist collaboration. We are in together in this as a partners, and we give each other uh, a lot of tangible and non tangible things. And I I refrain from using word help. I think uh, it abhi India abhi space and abhi both. I, I take my words back. I take that word back, and I understand it's a beautiful collaboration where yes. there is uh, yeah there is so much of exchange of ideas, and I'm sure that you are yeah. enriching their lives and they are enriching yours. Surely yeah. yes. Yeah. So I'm very happy and proud to represent abhi in all the other platforms, uh, and it gives me a lot of lot of sense of uh, uh, you know. Sense of fulfillment. Yes, I'm sure. Fulfillment of being being an artist. I'm very grateful for them for trusting me with their art, trusting me with their uh, their ideas, and trusting me uh, with their. Uh, uh, you know, art is a piece of yourself. It, it comes. It comes with a lot of emotions and a lot of dedication. After mm -hmm. that, only you're able to manifest and create an art piece. So I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful for you to give me this time and wonderful. Come on. Uh, for a Not at all. I enjoy doing this with you. I enjoy doing this with you because half of it wasn't very convincing for me because I was talking on a treading on a subject that I'm not really very uh, aware of. I don't know if it made sense, but I was just saying a few things that I felt uh, emotionally, and I think that's about it. Yeah. No, I think a lot of things made a lot of sense, and we will. We are making note of it. We are learning from you. So thank you so much, Vivek. for being with us thank you so much thank you ruby thank you appreciate your time thank you